with regards to the uh, goaltending coach position, uh, just what prompted the, the change? Uh, just what uh, shortcomings did you see in that area that uh, prompted you to make that change? You know, when you when you make decisions like that, a lot of it is is what your gut's telling you. And obviously, when it comes to decisions of this magnitude, um, you talk to all your people, and I certainly got opinions from all our people. And in the end, um, just felt like we we needed a change. Obviously, we had Andy sitting right there, and um, with his experience and knowledge of the organization, the goaltender, he was in the end the right guy. Taylor Haas. Uh, hi, Ron. Thanks for doing this. Did you look at any outside options uh, for the goaltending job, and just what what put Kando, Kyoto over the top? Was it that experience with the goalies? I think well, there's a, there's a lot of things. I really like the way the way Andy uh, came up through the Ontario League, the American League slash development, and now on to the NHL. Um, I I actually watched Andy uh, as a scout way back in the day when he was in Wilkes-Barre, so I understand the competitiveness, understanding the position, and you know, being for the most part a minor league goalie. The trials and tribulations, the ups and downs, um, spent some time in Europe. So I just really like the profile of, of what he is and um, talking to a lot of the people around here that are familiar with him. There was, wasn't a bad word said about him. His, his attention to detail on our prospects and our goalies in, in uh, Wilkes there, um, you know, delving into the, the, the mental side of it and you know, their lives to some degree. I just like, I just like what he brings to the table to feel. And I've, I've met him a couple of times and felt, felt comfortable that he was the right guy. Rob Rossi. Um, when, when you look at Tristan, I think all the physical tools are there. I think everybody would agree on that. Um, sometimes some situational awareness uh, hasn't been. When you talk about some of the things you've just mentioned about Andy, how much of that goes into what you hope uh, and expect Tristan to get back to in terms of his level? Well, there's certainly that that's part of it. I mean, Andy's job obviously now is, is predominantly the, the, the two guys on the big team. Um, so hopefully we can, we can make some, some little tweaks. And like I said, the mental side of the game, for a goaltender is is a huge part of it, and, and Andy is is well aware of that. So um, I think again, going back to Jar's experience from from last year, he's still a young goalie that's learning, um, and I believe he's going to learn a lot from last year. And like I said, I, I really like what Andy Andy's going to bring to the table here. Dan Kangerski. Hi. <clears throat> Ron, if I can go to your roster, if I might, to the defenseman in front of the goalie, it would look like right now Mark Friedman would be your third pairing right side defenseman. Is is that something you're comfortable with going into the season, or might that be one of the tweaks that you're still working on? Well, as I've as I've said to you guys numerous times, um, we'll look to upgrade at any position. If we can upgrade on defense, we'll certainly look at it. Uh, we don't have much wiggle room in terms of cap space so we'd have to to get creative but i think freedy and and chad are both guys that we feel can certainly play in the league along with a guy like you so and obviously po so i think the other thing is um you know you look at guys like like pd and john marino and we think there's there's more there they're both young players there's more there than they they gave us last year and and both um, you know, talking to them at year end, feel like there's more there. So we feel in some ways like, you know, there's upside in those two players, which could really help solidify our defense. Wes Crosby. Hey, Ron, um, going back to Tristan, just in your discussions with him um, after the season ended, did you get the sense or how much of a sense did you get that he is in the in the right spot to kind of bounce back from what what was a tough playoff performance for him? Yeah, I, I do believe he is.
pandemic, but why why make the move right now in early August compared to maybe June or July? Or was it just a matter of, as you said earlier, talking to your people in your organization and then arriving at a decision? Yeah, that's pretty much what it was. It's going through the process, making sure we're thinking of everything and talking things through. And there has been a lot going on. So it's uh, it's one of those things that's kind of been a little bit of an ongoing conversation here. And um, it's one of those things you you like to do as soon as you can at the end of the year, but sometimes there's other things that either take precedent or there's a, a little bit more um, of a process that you want to go through. And that was the case here. Taylor. What are your plans for placing Kyoto in that uh, development role? Is that something you expect to be able to do before the season starts? Yeah, we're actually just starting to, to get into that. Uh, things don't seem to ever cool down around here, but so Andy will, trying to lead that process and in the end Patrick myself and Berkey will all talk to probably a couple of candidates at the end and and alongside with Andy make a make a decision on who's best for the situation but we're definitely going to replace him that's an important role um being in in Wilkes and uh, getting out to hopefully see our prospect this year um obviously also with the zoom so one of those things that um you know the Bloomquists and the Clang they need they need some some attention from the organization, some some teaching and some mentoring. So we'll definitely look for, for the best guy we can find there. Rob? Ron, um, I noticed uh, that when it comes to, uh, in the, excuse me, when it comes to the equipment staff, uh, John Taglianetti is now the head equipment manager, or at least he's listed as that. Uh, was, was that a, what went into that decision, um, uh, if you can? Um, that's just kind of where we, we felt like we were at, uh, spoke to Dana and, and John both. And that's where both felt comfortable and Dana felt very comfortable there too. So, um, I don't, it, it wasn't that much of a change, a little bit of a change in title, uh, for Dana. Um, but all is, all is good there. And we have one last question that was submitted by Michelle Crecciolo. Why did you target Danton Heinen, and what value do you feel he can bring to the team? Um, he's a he's a well-rounded player that we feel like there's some upside there. I mean, there's there's obvious numbers in in Boston there to start him his career that kind of catch your eye. We feel like there's a little bit more goal scoring there. He can kill penalties, and we just feel like he's a he's a good fit for our team. Um, can play both wings. Uh, there was, we feel like there's a little bit of a value signing, so hopefully, hopefully he can uh, do what we we expect him to do here.